Hey y'all, did you just get a new pellet smoker? Maybe you're having some problems with your pellet smoker or not quite sure how to use your pellet smoker. Today, I'm going to show you how easy it is to use and maintain your pellet smoker. Okay, our first step is to fill our hopper. Now I like using my pellets and I like to take them out of the bags they come in and put them in these one gallon Ziploc bags. One, it's easier to handle. Two, it keeps the moisture out. And the biggest thing is uh, I can put around three and a half pounds in here. And if I'm cooking at 225, which most of the time when I'm smoking, that's the temperature I'm smoking at. I can get somewhere between four and six hours off of one of these bags. So I know if I'm doing a 12 hour smoke or 10 hour smoke, I know I'm gonna put two bags in here and then I don't have a lot of extra pellets left over in my pellet hopper, okay? So basically what I do is just open it up, open my bag and dump them in. So I have them in and, and then I close my bag. I'm gonna save my bags because I reuse these. Okay, so the next thing I do is I turn my power on and then I put it into the smoke position. On mine it has a shutdown cycle, then smoke, and then my temperatures. So in the smoke position, I want it to smoke for about 10 minutes and it will get somewhere around 150, 160 degrees. Hi y'all, Don here with Southern Backyard Cooking. I hope you're enjoying my video so far. We'll get back to it in just a moment. But I wanted to make sure that if you do like it, please make sure you subscribe, ring that bell up there. And this will get you notifications for all my new videos. And you'll get them as soon as they come out. Okay, it's been about three minutes now, and as you can see, I'm starting to get smoke out. It's a nice white smoke, and it will turn, as it gets temperature a little higher, it will turn to a, a bluish tint. Uh, my temperature right now is still only about 86, so it'll continue to go up. All right, y'all, so right now I'm about 175, and it's pretty stable up, so now I'm gonna turn it up to 225, which would be my cooking temperature that I want to smoke on for this turkey that I'm going to do. One of the things I want to make sure I do, I want to make sure this gets up to that 225 and stabilizes before I put my turkey on. For the stabilization, that takes about another 10 minutes. So I don't want to put it on there right when it hits that 225, 230 area. I want the, the, the temperature to stabilize first. One of the things I want to talk about in mine is a 1000, a Z Grills 1000, so I have three racks. If I'm smoking something large like a turkey, I'm going to take these top two racks out I generally just get a pair of my tongs and it, I can very easily just put them up on the top. I can very easily put them up on that top shelf and I have plenty of room in here to cook. My burner element is right here in the center. So preferably what I like to do is cook over in this area or if it's something smaller, say ribs or pork butt or something, I would kick, cook on this middle shelf. So it doesn't get a lot of that direct heat. I'm getting more of the smoke flavor in it. Okay, one of the biggest tips I can give you is to cook by temperature, not by time. So one of the things I like using is I have this little uh, wireless temperature gauge. So I have my probe here that goes into the meat. Make sure it doesn't touch a bone but goes into the meat. This is my wireless device. It just sits right up here. We'll hang right into there. This device here is my receiver. I can go 165 feet distance from here and get a good signal. So most of the time I just take this in, in the house and set it next to my chair while I'm watching TV. I'm smoking and I can see what the temperature is on the internal temperature of my meat. It also has a probe for the actual internal temperature of the smoker and it has two probes for two different meats. That's what I like about it is a lot of times I cook more than just one item. The other thing you can use is a, an instant read thermometer. Basically these come on as soon as you open them up. This one's by Amzo. I'll put a link down below for both of these. 
and this I can put it in and within one second it'll tell me the internal temperature. The whole key is you want to cook by that temperature not by how long is it going to take. You can always use that as a guide but you want that internal temperature is where you're looking for. Alright y'all we're back here I finished smoking my turkey. My turkey was a 12 pound turkey it took me a little over six hours. So now I'm going to do the cleanup. The first thing I'm going to do is turn my temp dial all the way down to sh the shutdown cycle. Now while this is still hot, I want to open it up and I want to clean a couple things. One, the grates are much easier to clean and get them really clean if they're hot. So I have this uh, particular scraper this type it's a non-wire I, I like to dip it in some water because the steam really helps to clean it and just scrape it clean the other area i like to do is my temperature probe is right here so i want to wipe it down to get any grease or anything that may be on it off and other than that, I just want to let it cool down and then we'll go to the rest of the cleaning areas. One of the things about it in the cool down is you can still hear the fan running. When it gets cooled down to the right temperature, the fan will stop running. At that point in time, we can turn it off. You don't want to turn it off at this point in time. You want to make sure it goes through that cool down cycle. All right, y'all, my grill is cooled down now, so I'm going to take all my racks out. The first thing I'm going to do and as you can tell I am wearing some nitrile gloves because it's dirty. This way, way I don't have to wash my hands a hundred times. Okay. So one of the things I'm going to do in here is I have my drip tray right here. I'm going to take it out it's wrapped in aluminum foil. I'm going to take the aluminum foil off it. And I'm going to rewrap it. But also I want to wipe all my areas down in here to get any grease that may be in there so that it doesn't start a fire. One of the things I try to do about every month and a half to two months is I will turn my smoker and run it for an hour, hour and a half at maximum temperature. This will burn off all that excess grease. The thing you don't want to have happen is you come out here and cook some fillets or anything because yeah it's a smoker but it's also a grill. So if I want to cook some fillets or a real nice steak and I've got an excess amount of grease in there that grease could catch on fire and it could ruin my steaks. I don't want that to happen. So to pull my drip pan out, it just comes straight out. I've got a trash can here. All I do is lay it up on it and unwrap it. And you can see a lot of the dirt and the grease. I do this about every uh, other time, if, especially if I'm only doing six to eight hour smokes. If I'm doing a 12, 14, 16 hour smoke, I'll do it after, after that smoke. But in most cases, I can go two, sometimes three smokes without doing this. So, I get it taken off. As you can see, there's stuff on it. I don't concern myself too much with that. Every now and then, I may scrape it, but I probably only scrape it once a year because of the aluminum foil. All right, so I have my aluminum foil. This is food service, heavy-duty food service foil. Um, it comes 700 square, 50 square feet. Basically, it's 18 inches wide and 500 feet long. A roll of this runs you, oh, about 20 to 25 dollars. I do take my foil here and pull me off of just a little bit larger than what, what the, the size of it. Cut it off. And then I just start at the edge down here where the drip pan, the drip tray actually is. And I fold over all the edges.
and it's and it's ready to go back in. All right, y'all, this is the inside down looking down at the bottom. You can see there's quite a bit of dust. This is my heat deflector. So basically I'm taking it off and just go right over. And you can see my ash pot. Now, right now there's not a lot in there. Of course, I've cleaned it before this particular use, but sometimes it will get full or half full and you'll have problems with that if you don't clean this and get all that out it will not light or will not stay lit so your smoke will go bad so we're going to vacuum all this out so what i have is i have my shop vac and i'm just going to vacuum it all out now one thing you notice when i vacuumed it out i vacuumed all the dust everywhere and the reason I do that is if I don't do that, that can have a chance of blowing up and getting on your food. This is one of the reasons why I like this Z-Grill, is it makes me do this. I know some of the owners of Pit Bosses, they have an ash dump. So down at the bottom, you have a little tray you can pull out. It'll dump this ash pot. But it doesn't promote you to actually get in here and vacuum everything out all right y'all i got it all put back together i want to thank you for watching my video if you did like it make sure you ring that bell subscribe and until next time y'all have a great one